Here's another important video from the Personal Defense Network. Having a laser on your firearm as a backup or tertiary sighting device is a great option. And for a long time, the only way to get a conveniently mounted laser onto a revolver was the laser grip. Well, LaserLite has come out with a new product, one that I haven't used before, one I have never installed before. And in fact, this is probably one of the first production ones ever. And this is a side mount laser. The side mount laser is actually designed to attach directly to the side plate of your compact revolver. This one happens to be a Smith & Wesson revolver. So we're going to go through the process of mounting this and actually try it out and see how it works. Of course, I've had a laser on this revolver already for quite some time. I'm going to go ahead and remove this set of laser grips. It's going to be relatively easy to do. Having the laser as a backup device, especially on this small firearm, is really a great idea, especially when it can be completely unobtrusive and not get in the way of the use of a holster or reloading or anything else you're going to need to do. You're not going to have to worry about having a mount out on the front of the firearm or certainly not out on the trigger guard like you might have had to in earlier decades. We remove this set of laser grips. Make sure we keep our batteries with that. So I'm going to set that grip aside for a second though and actually go ahead and take the side plate screws off of the firearm. Now what's important to remember is that we're not going to mess with the internals of the firearm at all. We're not going to get into the revolver itself and we're not going to take this side plate off. We're simply going to be replacing the screws that hold the side plate in place. And on this particular revolver, we're not even going to take off the third screw. There's one other screw here up towards the front on this side plate and we're not going to remove it at all. Again, we'll want to keep these with our other parts that we may want to put back on there at some point. So now we'll place the side mount laser, make sure that it's aligned properly with the screws that we removed. Now these are going to be slightly different than the factory screws themselves and in fact these use an Allen wrench instead of the flathead screwdriver. We can see already that the side mount laser isn't going to interfere with our replacement grip. It's also not going to interfere with being able to put our finger in one place here above the trigger when we're actually in our ready position. As we look at this, of course, we can see that it's also not going to interfere with opening the cylinder at all. We wouldn't want to put anything on a defensive revolver that was going to interfere with the opening or closing of the cylinder. And I don't just mean blocking it. Of course, we probably aren't going to find too many accessories that are designed to block that. But we don't want something that's going to get in the way and make it very cumbersome to get into. Now I'm going to go ahead and close these down. You might want to use some type of Loctite uh, to make these a more permanent mounting solution once you're sure that you actually want to keep the side mount laser on your revolver. Again, today, this is the first time I'm putting it on, so rather than go ahead and Loctite it down now, I want to have the option of removing it in case this doesn't work or I find it to be inconvenient or even just not very efficient. With a good little snap, and now we have our soft rubber grips and our side mount laser in place. Now, when I open this back up, I can point it around, and you can see that it requires a thumb motion to actually come up and hit on the back to turn that button on. You can see that button right back here. It's actually a wedge-shaped button so that when you put that thumb down on top of it, you hit it very quickly and easily. And then we go ahead and we see that that red laser dot is on. If I hit it again, it's going to go to a flashing dot. And if I hit it a third time, it's going to turn it off. So I can be in my ready position. I can decide that I actually need that laser to be on, reach my thumb over, turn it on. I see the dot. I can hit it a second time. I know I have a flashing dot or I can hit it a third time and turn it off. If I wanted the flashing dot to start as my primary response, I simply bring my thumb over, don't need to look, feel it, hit it twice. If I were looking down range, I would see the flashing dot. And then again, I can turn it off very conveniently. So now let's go to the range and try out our laser light side mount laser. Okay, so we're back on the ranges here at Blackwing Shooting Center, and I've got my side mount laser. This is gonna be my first shooting session with the side mount laser, and we're gonna go ahead and start from an extended position. Now, normally when I train with a laser sighting device, I'm gonna be in some kind of a compromised position. There's gonna be some unorthodox reason for me to need the laser as my aiming device, maybe a compressed position. Because I've never shot this laser before, I'm gonna shoot at extension the first couple times. We're gonna see what happens, then I'll bring it back in, finish up with a compressed situation. Again, 
we see that because this is the first time we're shooting this laser on this firearm, we don't know exactly where our point of impact is going to be relative to our point of aim. We can see the shots are pretty consistently off to the right, just a little bit low. Let's try it from the compressed position anyway, and let's just see where we are. Again, from the compressed position, less support, less accuracy capability, we know that we're off to the right and low again with those two shots as well. I'll reach over, turn the side mount laser off. I'm going to go ahead and eject these rounds, and we're going to go ahead and stay in an empty position. We're going to make sure that the gun is completely unloaded, and we're going to keep the cylinder open, because now administratively, I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments and see if we can get that group to be exactly where we want it to be. Okay, so I've made some adjustments. Put a few rounds into the revolver and take a look and see where we are. You can see I've definitely made up for the windage. I'm gonna go ahead and unload the firearm and let's see if we can work on the elevation. Made an adjustment there. I'm gonna go ahead and load the firearm again. and see how that looks. And now with one more round, we'll go from our compressed shooting position and see if this laser is now set up appropriately to help us in this close quarter situation where we can't extend, we've been injured, confined space, or another situation where we want to make sure that we have an idea where our point of impact is going to be without having our normal fully extended point of aim. And that's certainly from a defensive purpose, combat accurate. The laser light side mount laser is another option what we have here to mount the laser on the revolver and not interfere with our ability to put any kind of grip we want on there or use it in any kind of a standard defensive holster. And of course it is very convenient, easy to use, flipping that thumb over from one side or another to go from the off mode to the on mode to our flash mode or then again to turn it off. Take a look at the laser light side mount laser as an option for your defensive revolver. Check out more videos just like this one at the Personal Defense Network.